Hi everyone. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, you know the autism spectrum, puberty, and sexuality for young learners. Um, I used to think that I had bad social skills, so I had a hard time making friends and building relationships and getting a girlfriend. Um, all those important topics, and um, you know, it's it's it's, it's really the problem is as I was using. Not that I had poor social skills, but I was using the wrong social skills. And so puberty and sexuality, where sexuality comes into play with autism, is that you have to understand that it's not different than friendship. Yes, it is a romantic relationship, but there is no difference between friendship and relationship other than the intimacy. Now, how do you get to that intimacy? I used to think it was a magic secret, but it's actually using friendship skills and building a friendship with someone. Um, so what happened to me is that I would always um, get into situations where I, I need to, I'm very black and white, and I need to categorize things. So I um, struggle with like, when I meet someone, I meet, when I say, hi, how are you? I'm Travis. I'm already thinking, are you my friend or are you my girlfriend? Um, and that's very dangerous because at that point, most people don't know if you're a friend or a girlfriend. Um, they're kind of like testing out the waters and kind of trying to figure out what's going on. Um, but I'm needing to label that right away. And that's been a, a problem because it causes me to come on too strong, scare people away, and things like that. Now, the problem with that is because I need to determine if you're my girlfriend or not right away, I start needing to get sexual right away and make sexual comments and ask sexual questions. So I might be like, hi, how are you? I'm Travis. Can I touch you or whatever? Um, well, now, the issue with that is that obviously... It's too soon to be asking for permission to touch. It's good to ask for permission. So like there's two things people with autism know. They have really good body part ID. So they're going around asking about all the different body parts that they can touch. And they also know that what do you have to do before you ask, touch a woman? You have to ask her for permission, which is great. It's good we know that. They know this because everybody else knows this and we teach this. Um, the problem with that is, is as Peter Gerhardt says, one of, my, one of my people that I really admire, is that that's the last step and about a 787 step chain that goes from hi, how are you, all the way to can I touch you or whatever. Um, the problem with that is there's 786 steps in between there that we have to teach and we have to learn. Um, and so I think we need to really focus on the social skills and getting to know someone and how we build friendships and relationships and things like that. So this presentation that I offer is called Puberty and Sexuality for Young Learners on the Autism Spectrum. And we're gonna talk about friendship skills as puberty skills. Um, like I said, I used to think that it was something entirely different. So there would be like two spectrums, right? Um, you'd have this, on one hand, you've got this friendship spectrum here, and right above that, a higher hierarchy, a higher level, we've got this um, relationship spectrum or dating spectrum. And I used to think that you had to go from this friendship spectrum and transfer over to this dating spectrum. And the pro uh, deeper than that, which made the problem more challenging, was that I thought you had to do that right away from the time that you say, hi, how are you, I'm Travis, can I touch your, I'm jumping from that friendship spectrum to the dating relationship spectrum. Um, so that was really challenging uh, and it created some issues in itself. Um, so yeah, I think that it's important to continue to um, teach social skills on a friendship level because I really need to learn just how to talk to people and have conversations with people. Now, the funny thing is, what I'm learning is that I've actually got decent social skills. I can carry on an important, intriguing conversation with anyone. And I think that for some reason I thought because she was a pretty girl and I was attracted to her, I had to communicate sexual interest and I had to do that right away. And that was very dangerous and, and a problem um, because it scares people away and it's creepy and unsafe. Unsafe behavior is creepy. Creepy is unsafe behavior. So um, what we really want to do is teach people with autism how to just be friends with the girls. Um, teach men with autism how to just be friends with the girls. Um, that's very important. Um, and so the problem I had was that I just didn't have a lot of sexual knowledge. And I didn't have a lot of sexuality education. And therefore, I didn't know how to relate to girls and build connections with them. Um, and, you know, like I, I keep saying over and over, I just want to drive this home, this point home, that I was making it sexual right away because I thought you had to categorize it as a girlfriend right away or make it like a romantic relationship right away. Um, people with autism often get into trouble because we will Google things, like how to get a girlfriend. I remember one day, way back in 2007, I was 22 years old, just got diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, and I actually Googled the phrase, how do you get a girlfriend? Worst thing I ever did. Um, basically, you get people, mainly men, that'll tell you that um, 
if you don't have sex within the first three dates, a girl's gonna think that you're not interested in her and she's gonna blow you off. Um, so like, that was part of what contributed to me thinking that you had to get sexual right away and have these conversations that were sexual because um, I learned these things that say, well, you're gonna end up in the friend zone if you don't push for sex, um, which is very risky and very dangerous. Um, I'm really starting to believe that now that I'm getting the proper sexuality education and the proper care, I'm starting to believe that there's actually not such, there is no such thing as friend zone. And I'm really excited about that because you can be someone's friend and still get to know them and possibly date them. Um, so that's really exciting. So this presentation, we're going to talk a lot about how to build friend, make friends and build friendships because that's the precursor to a dating relationship. Okay. And so it's very important that we're going to, you know, we're just going to dive into friendship skills, social skills, training and friendship. So the problem I was having is that I was using the wrong social skills because I needed to categorize that I needed, I want you to be my girlfriend. After I said, hi, how are you? I started using sexuality, social skills, um, and romantic social skills with a girl too soon. And I was using them right away. Um, instead of using my friendship skills. So I don't want us to think that people with autism always have poor social skills because that's just simply not always the case. Um, oftentimes people with autism have pe impeccable social skills. We're just using them in the wrong context. And that's what I was doing. I was using my social skills in the wrong context and therefore I, was getting the, I wasn't getting the results that I wanted or needed. Um, and so that's very important. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna continue to talk about that um, and just teach people how to build friendships and relationships and connect with other people. Connection is key. Um, people like to be connected with and share their stories and feel heard. So we're going to work on active listening skills. We're going to talk about that in this presentation. We're going to talk about some puberty related things because it's important to know um, for therapists to know and for parents to know. And we're going to talk about social thinking and what I call sexual thinking. Um, and we're going to talk about those two and how they relate and how there's a spectrum for everything. So when we think of the autism spectrum, we've got that math, math line segments, two arrows on each end, one arrow on each end. So uh, two arrows total, one arrow on each end. Um, so the math line segment is also a social thinking segment. It's a spectrum. And then the sexuality thinking spectrum, which is a spectrum as well, a uh, segment, which is a spectrum as well. So it's important to talk about all this stuff. And we're going to do that in this presentation. Um, we're going to leave time for question and answer at the end of the presentation. And we're just going to dive into how I'm a very black and white thinker. We're going to talk about that and how I need to work on we need to start teaching people with autism to have more flexible brains and think in the gray area and understanding relationships because that's so important. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about what's going to happen during this presentation. Um, what I'm going to be talking to you guys about. And if you have any questions about my presentation, please feel free to reach out to me. And we're going to talk about um, relationships, puberty and sexuality and dating. So thanks a lot and I hope you have a great day.